Hello, Chris England here, and we're going to go ahead and continue with the Pirate Banner f Fiesta. Once again, we've had a Brigid. So Brigid, for those who are unaware of the genealogy Thracia lore, this is Evel's basic first form. So this is before she starts out as Evel the of the uh, Fianna Freeblades. As a so oddly enough, this would be close enough to be consider her actual base form because she does start out as a pirate in the original granted she gets abandoned by her crew but she still is a pirate so her illustration is by might o we have her as a very odd red bow infantry and then we have her voice actress as akemi okumura so one of the big ones that I found was Shina Fujibayashi from the Tales game series. We have from Donna from Grand Blue Fantasy, but probably one of the most well-known roles that Miss Okumura ha Okumura has is Nami from One Piece. So, oddly enough, very very fitting choice for the voice actress. So we have a pirate in Fire Emblem being played by a pirate in One Piece. So her kit, once again, because, because this is 2020, we have a lot more cases where units are more on the four to five star line. In this case, Bri Brigid's kit is definitely one of those. So we do have the Harsh Command Plus as well as Pulse Smoke, but we also have her a brand new A skill at the time, the Swift Impact, I believe it was. So uh, if she initiates battle during during combat, plus 7 to speed, plus 10 to defense, and then the opponent cannot make a follow-up attack. And then we also have the Helm's Bow, so flying effective. If there's no ally with no ally adjacent to her during battle, the opponent gets speed, defense, minus 5, and then any bonuses to those stats are nullified. So once again, a very, very, very basic kit. We do have some very good skills in general. We have some speed and defense debuffs we have pulse smoke so a reduction on chances a uh, reduction on uh cooldown counts for the foes so making it harder for them to do their stuff and then we also have harsh command which is while it's not as impressive as it used to be is still a really good skill and it was still a really good skill in 2020 one thing that I will note is that her kit is definitely very old. We do we while we do see more units with this skill in general, we don't see it very often. And the same thing goes for its tier three skill. The um, I believe it was the sturdy blow two, two or or swift blow two. I forget. I, I do forget which one it was actually. But we do not. We definitely don't see this one on force the the tier three on four stars as much as possible definitely for her b skill something that does capitalize on her speed so in total she has a grand total of 12 speed uh point difference between the foes on attack so probably something like desperation would help something that bases on speed unfortunately a lot of the uh re the dodge effect are only available for weapon infantries so unfor she unfortunately would not be able to use that which actually would be make her very very much more annoying in certain aspects but un and then the unfortunate part also is that while her bow is very good it is also only a plus bow meaning that it's not a prf so its effect isn't really that super special but all in all a very good unit <laughs> And then we have the shipless pirate. We have Tibarn, this time as a colorless beast flyer. Once again, beautiful artwork by uh, Senri Kita. 
And then for our voice actor, we have Tatsuhisa Suzuki. So for his roles, from what I remember, it was so one of the more notable new roles he has is Draken or Ken Ryuguji from Tokyo Revengers. We also have Raihan from to Pokemon Journeys. We have probably more of a well, more of a well known is Bon from the Seven Deadly Sins. And then for the lady viewers in the house, we have Makoto Tachibana from Free. Now this is more of a five-star skill set. We start with the ever rare Gale Force, as not many units actively have this in general. I think it was at least five, around five or six units. We also have Heavy Blade 4, so if his attack is higher than foe's attack, every single attack will buff his cooldown count by 1 and deal 5 extra damage. We also have Attack Smoke, and then we also, for a new skill, at least once again for that time, we have Dive Bomb. So at the start of combat, if both his and his foe's HP are both at least 80% or greater, and he initiates combat, he performs a follow-up attack right after his original attack. So this is a different version of Desperation. Instead of, being some, instead of being lower on HP, this is actually more like Desperation effect with a Quick Repost effect, uh, HP requirement. Now, of course, this, opens, this does open up very, very good uh, sets of kits. In general, you want, this will be used on very, very heavy hitters. I do th remember that the a lot of people use that this with the a brave weapon or the like the ninja naginata in order to get off the massive amounts of attacks. Um, we also have his sky pirate's claw. Once again, we have a cooldown count minus one, and then if he's not adjacent to any single ally during battle, he gets plus he gets plus five to attack. His foe gets minus five to attack, and he gets a guaranteed follow up. And then, of course, we have the flyer bonus, flyer transformation bonus, where he gets plus one movement and plus two attack. So, as a quick note, the bonus of the transformed is only, is when he actually transforms, whereas if he is in it, it's the buff, buff, buff to two to attack. So, once again, the combination of heavy blade four and gale force is one of the more dangerous items in the game just because this is doing extra damage he also gets a guarantee the guaranteed follow-up as long as he's not adjacent to anything and he gets another another action afterwards having also having that uh dive bomb effect is definitely a nice one since he acts so one extra turn cooldown count plus one per attack and then a at follow-up attack right after units attack in general, I would say that the attack smoke is a little bit less useful in general, possibly giving him a joint drive attack. Or I mean, attack smoke's also an option because attack smoke four is also a definite option because of that that extra turn from Gale Force. It's it. Now on to our four-star Geese. So Geese this round is a Lance Infantry. So unfortunately he is falling into the case where he does not get his original weaponry. And unfortunately this is the case where he is a unit that is stuck in seasonal hell. That, being, that meaning that he has only one version of himself stuck in this pirate banner. So we're still waiting on his base version to come out as an axe user. This was the exact same case with Charlotte when she was originally released as a bridal unit. So we have he is illustrated by Mosutsu, so part of the Tries Incorporated. And then his voice actor is Furukawa Makoto. So in addition to voicing Sylvain, we also have Saitama from One Punch Man. We have Taiju Oki from Dr. Stone. We have a personal favorite of mine, Miyuki Shirogane from Kaguya-sama Love is War. And then from Dragalia Lost, we have the double role of Marty and Menoetius.
行ったことねえ海はねえぜ。As is with every single case of V4 Star Focus, we have a very limiting kit. And unfortunately, this kit has not aged very well. First off, we have, repos I believe it was Reposition. Then we have Fire Boost, which is his five star. The best thing about his kit is that three star, that four star infantry pulse. So at the start of the first turn, if any unit that has HP lo a lower HP than him will get their cooldown count minus one. And now this effect only affects will uh, work on infantry units, but he also has the so his fire boost is also during battle. If his HP is at least three greater than the foes during battle, he gets attack plus six. Unfortunately, this skill in general has been phased out in favor of a lot of other ones. You could say that push skills are much better. Definitely catch and ideal skills are much better. I would also say that the brazen skills are actually better than this one. Due to the fact that this skill actually counts current, not maximum. So if he's at like 10 HP, it's most likely not going to go off. His probable came to claim to fame is going to be his flowing lance plus. So once again, if he's alone... So not adjacent to a single ally. During combat, he gives the foe minus five and nullified bonuses to both attack and defense. So once again, his kit definitely does need work. I, you will definitely re require to remove the A skill for something different. Um, in his case, because he's not exactly a super fast unit, probably a sturdy impact would be worse worth it. Um, maybe steady impact, so the speed defense one. The other option is to give him Surge Sparrow. While he may not be able to do follow-up attacks super easily, he can definitely heal him, constantly heal himself. But for the infantry pulse, he does actually have a very good HP score, so this will go off pretty often. And, then, and the other thing is that this is skill is very useful for the um, arena assault, but in general, the skill, his skill set is very, very lacking. However, I am also saying that from the standpoint of right now. Back then, it was actually very good because this skill, the infantry pulse, was actually kind of hard to come by. And on to our duo. We have the Harmonic Pirates. Maining Veronica with Xander as the support, as an axe cavalry. Once again, beautiful art from Peneko R. And then for the voice actors, we have a double of Rina Hidaka with Katsuyuki Konishi. I have covered um, Mr. Konishi before, so Kamina from Guren Lagen, Balam from Welcome to Demon School, Iromakun, and then Tengen Usui from uh, Demon Slayer. But for Rina Hidaka, we have Philo from The Rising of the Shield Hero. We have Urara Kawashima from Food Wars. Silica from SAO. And I believe there are some other ones that I can remember. I just unfortunately don't remember them at the time. But those are the three that specifically stick out for my personal thing. So we do. So this is. The <laughs> As for the kit, once again, we have Bonfire. We have Lull, Attack Defense 3. And then I believe this was Attack Defense Gap. We also have, at the t once again, at the time, a brand new solo skill. This is Attack Defense Solo 4. So unfortunately, because of the solo skills being so hard to transfer over, it is very, very hard to actively add this skill to any unit unless they already have three and three in and of itself is also kind of hard to find um we also do have the gate anchor axe once again we have cooldown count minus one and then if she is not adjacent to a single ally during combat she gets plus uh defense and res plus five the foe gets minus defense res five and she performs a guaranteed follow-up so she is very, very tanky in terms of her defense. Her resistance is all right in general. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily one of the highest sets for 
this slow of a unit, but she is a very good unit. I personally have used her multiple times as a very good harmonic. And then we also have her harmonic skill. So she at any heroes that have the same start point, so from the same game, so in this case, heroes or OCs as well as fates, get resonance, resonance shields. And this skill can actually be activated once every three turns per map. So turn one, then four, then seven. And then the effect is... During battle, plus defense res plus four. And then at for the for each turn, the first during the first battle, the foe cannot perform a follow-up attack. So she is both both denying follow-ups for her foes and giving herself a guaranteed follow-up. Opening up a br definitely brand new door for fates units that are very slow or fates units that just don't want the foe to get a follow-up. だったろ。マックス。分かっている。それがいいものか。油断するな。もらった。And then on the map, we also do have our Tempest Trial unit, Daros, the Sea Walker. So for Daros, once again, he is going to have a kit very similar to what Geese has, except he is a Axe Infantry. He is drawn by Sod, uh, Ipe Soeda. And for his voice actor, we have Shintaro Tanaka. So once again, this is a much newer voice actor to the scene in terms of roles that I saw. The only one that I personally remember seeing that I recognized was Kei Nagara from Cardfight Vanguard G series. We also do have Pelio's father from Seven Deadly Sins. And then um, Chin Gensai from King of Fighters. So unfortunately, he, since we... we don't have any reason to put up his Tempest Trial info from this one, which is kind of an odd choice. We have the Deck Squabber, so it's the exact same thing as the Flowing Lance, except it's an axe. We have the Shove. We have Earth Boost, which is a little bit more, in more useful than Fire Boost because it does ha keep him alive for longer and also keep its effect going for longer. And then his odd defense wave as well. So one of the things that is the theme for this pirate banner, as opposed to the last one where it was more all over the place, each of the heroes have each of the units have a a solo skill embedded into their weapons. For Bridget, she has her bow gives minus speed and defense five, as well as nullifies any of the bonuses. For Tibarn, he gets he does a 10-point attack swing, plus 5 to his attack, minus 5 to the foe's attack, as well as a guaranteed follow-up. For Geese, as well as Daros, it is attacks, defense, minus 5, and then nullify bonuses on those stats. And then for Veronica, she, ha she has defense res plus 5, foe defense res minus 5, and a guaranteed follow-up. So in terms of fodder, I would say that the easiest one to use is actually Bridget. The bow in and of itself may not be super special, but we do have a very good A skill and a C skill that is very hard to find. If a unit starts with Steady Blow, two, we can transfer over the A, a portion and then the remainder of the C. The other option would be to transfer these two skills at once. So the bow as well as the harsh command plus. So 
In terms of ease, she is definitely the highest of the choices. While Tabarn may have some better skills in general, it is also much harder to decide what to transfer over just because of the four slot limit. We can't transfer over his weapon, and attack smoke three is definitely co common enough. So the question becomes, how, do you want the gale force off of him? Do you want the heavy blade four off of him? And do you, or, and, or do you want the dive bomb? So one of the best things is that you can transfer either or the heavy blade, the heavy blade or the gale force, but not both if you want to do dive bomb three. Now, one other option for him to equip is a near trace instead. While it does take away from his guaranteed follow-up bonus, or the, the follow-up guaranteed after original attack bonus, but it does make him much more mobile. Then for Geese, unfortunately his kit pretty much needs to be redone entirely. He can keep the lance pretty easily. He can keep the infantry pulse, but and definitely his assist skill, but he does need some kind of skill in the specials, like Bonfire or Ignis, some kind of ace, ace skill that makes him much more dangerous. A uh, good choice would definitely be attack defense solo four. Um, and then for his B skill, something that allow, allows him to do maybe something like Brash Assault that allows him to guarantee a follow-up because his speed, while it isn't metal, like middling, it is not the highest. For Veronica, definitely adding an O'Neill trace, a D'Neill trace would definitely be good. Um, the other thing is that since the only way for her to get a deny, fo, deny a foe's follow-up is through her harmony skill, harmonized skill, the best option for her C skill would be Attack Smoke 4. Because that could that also denies foes follow-ups. Now it may seem a little bit redundant, but there is always the option of changing her bonfire to gale force to make her much more of a dangerous threat to foes, especially if she has that ability to, if you switch out this her C skill to attack smoke four. Unfortunately, because Daros is a little bit harder to judge right now, just because I don't personally remember enough of... I remember his skill set was focused a lot on defensive ability. But once again, the unfortunate part about his kit is that it's like Geese, except it needs even more fixing. A lot of... You can definitely go with a, like, steady... A, like, sturdy stance four. So the defensive one that comes off of Surter, his base form. You can go with attack defense ideal because he wants to keep his HP as high enough. If you want to keep it so that he does, he gets more, you can definitely replace his earth boost with a brash attack defense three. Once again, that is a very common skill right, right of now. Um, but in terms of what this banner offers, this is a very solid banner. Now, of course, we don't have any kind of spark for this one. So unfortunately, it would be a case where you either go up to your five star or set a limit to yourself to how many you're going to pull. But that's it for this banner. Thank you all for listening, and I will catch you another time.